All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to talk about edge loops today and uh, snaps. So let's go ahead and create a cube. And we are going to snap it to the grid. So right now you can see that the pivot, which is this little guy right here, I can rotate around the pivot. It's in the center of the cube. Well, let's move the pivot to below the cube. If you want to do that, you hold down D and you drag it down. And now you can see that if I were to rotate it, it rotates around that. So uh, let's put this pivot by holding D right at the bottom of this cube. We're gonna do that by turning on one of our snaps up here. Snap two points, and it'll snap to one of the four corners. So I'm gonna hold down D, and you can see it snaps to the bottom right there. Now I'm gonna turn that off. I'm gonna snap it now to the grid. And there you go. So now we're snapped right down there in the grid. So that grid point, that X right there, is what the pivot's gonna be in Unreal when you bring it in. So if we want our objects to usually be snug right on there. You could also put the pivot in the corner. So I snap to point again, and then I'll snap back to grid, and then put it like right there. So that's another way to do it. And then you can see that when you scale it, it scales up from there. Um, it doesn't really matter. I just want you guys to see how to do that. So let's talk about snapping as we move too. So I'm going to do an extrusion right here and I'm going to pull it out. And you can see that, oh wow, it goes exactly one step on the grid. That's because we have grid snaps turned on. Now you can also, if you double click right, right now, if we're on the move tool, you can see that that's, that's the move tool right here. I hit W. You double click on it and the options will pop up and you can see that you can set the uh, snaps right here to relative and if I were to now do an extrusion here, it'll also snap. Even though my grid snap is not on, it's set to 1. If I set it to 0.5, you can see that. Do another extrusion here. Oops. It'll come out half of one of the grid markers. Just like that. So if you find that everything's kind of snapping and you don't want it to, that's probably because you got your snaps on um, and you don't want them on. So here we go. So I'm just creating this kind of complex shape and I'll turn my um, snaps off now. Or yeah. Uh, now when we hit three, everything be kind of kind of comes together like this. And let's say that we wanted this to retain some structure, whatever this object is. And you can create whatever object you want. Um, just create something out of squares. Well, what we're going to need to do is to create what's called an edge loop in order to um, allow this to retain some structure. So I'm going to hold, uh, go to edge mode, hold down shift, and then I'm going to right click. This, these are called gestures, by the way, when you do these weird things. So again, that's shift, right click, but you have to be in edge mode first. And you're going to go to Insert Edge Loop Tool. Now be careful, don't do Offset Edge Loop or Slide Edge. You want the Insert Edge Loop Tool. Bring up the options on it by double-clicking and make sure that they look like mine. We're going to have a relative distance from the edge, autocomplete, fixed quads. This is going to, wherever you click, it's going to go perpendicular, which means the opposite of parallel. So if I click on this line, it's going to go that direction. If I click on this line, it's going to go this direction. So if I click here and I drag, I can put an edge loop here and here. Now let's see what that does. Now, all of a sudden, when we hit three, it's smooth on the, those areas, but on the bottom and the top, it's kind of flat. I could do the same thing to this object. I'll put one on top and bottom. Wow, that's kind of cool. We got this weird sci-fi object that we've created. Now you could do that more on these to give it even more structure and give it a corner right there. So rounded edges, maybe I want corners in certain areas. The closer you get to the corner, the more it'll be sharp, a sharp edge instead of rounded. So if I, again, if I put one like right there, you can see that it's a very sharp edge. But if I put one a little further back, it goes like that. I'm just going to be putting these kind of all over, but I'll leave a couple areas rounded just to kind of see. I like, I want one right here too. Okay, let's see. One more right there. 
and maybe here and here. We got we only have one area that's really rounded now. So why even take the time to do this? Why not, if we're gonna have everything kind of square anyway, why not just leave it like this? Well, you can see that this kind of looks like Nintendo 64. But when we hit three, we can see that it looks a lot higher poly. Everything looks a little bit more nice and clean and kind of modern. Because um, most objects don't actually have completely sharp edges. So if you want to adjust your edges, you can double click on them. Just make sure you go back into selection mode. And then you can actually slide the edges. So if you double click on an edge, it'll actually select that entire ring. And you can move it up, up or down um, as you see fit. If you delete it, what ends up happening is it, can, it can actually can create some problems. Um, but I'll get into that more later. I think that's probably good for now. Just create, create something that's got some rounded edges. Oh, and then when you're done, you hit this button twice. Smooth. One. Oops. Go into object mode. Select the entire thing. Hit this button twice. That'll actually cook in those uh, extra faces. Instead of just being in preview mode, it'll actually show you what it's going to look like in Unreal. And it'll give you all the faces. And you can see that this is 8,000 triangles, which is fine. That's a normal, good amount for a prop. Um, especially as we get into next-gen games. So let's see what you can create with edge loops.